So what's the deal with the anti-porn movement? They use porn as their fear-mongering tool because it's easy for society to feel really sorry for women because aren't women so pitiful and weak and, and downright stupid at times? It's not quite as easy to convince all of society the same thing about men. It's interesting that the anti-porn movement is is usually characterized as a feminist thing and because of that a few things happen. People don't pay as much attention because they don't think well I guess on one hand they might not think it's that much of a threat on the other hand they might think that anything feminism does is great for women so when it comes to the anti-porn movement one of the main culprits that we know of is porn harms made famous by their YouTube channel pornharms.com well, they've also got the website, pornharms.com, and I'm going to take a look at it, and along the way, talk about a few things, and hopefully by the end, I'll have a point. This is pornharms.com, and it makes up for its lack in flashiness by providing us with tons of pseudoscientific links. I'm going to start right here with this Teenagers and Pornography Addiction, Treating the Silent Epidemic, which tells us it is research and they say it's about addiction, brain science, children, cyber sex, family, internet, internet safety, psychological, societal. John Mark Haney tells us that today the scene is very different. Just like they always remember to tell us about drugs. Oh, no, 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 the drugs today are much, much harder than the drugs we ever got our hands on. And he tells us, like so many others do, that, oh, yes, it's pornography, it's gone mainstream. It's not just a back alley thing anymore. Why every race and even the poor people are able to now look at porn in their own homes. And teenagers, thanks to MTV, are now talking about once taboo subjects like masturbation and looking up. And the ability to be anonymous, well, for a teenager who is unsure of his or yes, even her sexual identity, pornography can be like a trip to the ultimate candy shop. He tells us that the modern porn has become a fix for a new breed of addicts who literally sacrifice health and happiness to indulge in the magic images they quietly worship. Well, and he's going to refer us to some other research. Benedek and Brown of 1999 noted several negative effects of porn on young people. This, that, and the other thing. And oh, that other thing too. But heck, that's not science. That's just observation. So, Haney's going to tell us about the brain science behind the harms in pornography. It's a powerful biochemical rush. Teens who experience the thrill will not surprisingly want to experience it again. And hey, considering that, it's helpful for practitioners to see pornography not as just a social issue, but as a drug, because the addictive mechanism is clearly part of the danger. He says a lot more stuff, but none of it really seems very researchy to me. It's more like a bunch of recommendations for counselors. But considering he's using phrases like sexual identity and magic images that they quietly worship, it makes me wonder about this guy. Let's go see who he is. And I don't want to dig too deep, so I'll just take the first one. Crossroads Counseling Associates. I wonder if he's a therapist. Check the therapist tab. And there he is. And I'm totally not shocked to find out that he is a youth minister and a pastoral counselor. Back on the Porn Harms main page, let's find something else to look at. Maybe something fun. Oh, there's a lot of guy use here. And, well, I have a fun little game to play with her. Let's pop open a link here. And we'll do a term search for the phrase women and children and see how many times it turns up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 43. 43 times. That's a lot of women and children. 
in a 48 page document. That was fun, huh? Yeah, okay. Let's go find something else to look at. I think I saw some good stuff here in the family section. Let's see. The effects of pornography on individuals, marriage, family, and community. Oh my goodness. That's everything. Scribd. Uh-oh. <laughs> Studies in Catholic higher education. Alrighty. Patrick F. Fagan. Ph.D. Oh boy, that's some good uh, good stuff. Is this research? I have to go check again. That oh, doesn't say. <laughs> oh, up here it tells us research. Oh, good Lord. Good Lord Almighty. Okay. Let's look, let's look in the brain science section. Brain science. And I'm actually going to spare you this this document because now I read I read it and and then I went to go see who that dude was just like I did with that first guy and I'm just gonna cut to the chase on this one and show you well it's always hard for me to cut to the chase he's got a lot of he's got a lot of science in here he dumbs it down for us real good you know he tells us about the neurotransmitter receptors and all this crap and you know yeah we get it we get it, it talks about addiction frontal lobe damage well, I guess the most alarming thing was he's, you know, they're saying this frontal lobe damage, and, and he points out this, this stuff about an exhibit impaired, impaired judgment. You know, and it's like, okay, but so what are, you, what are you proposing? We do. Just let these, you know, impair, judgment impaired people run loose in society? That would be insanity. Secular philosophy will not heal them either, and the government can't save them. Step two of the 12-step program for sex addicts says that those healed came to believe that a power greater than themselves could restore them to sanity. Interestingly, peer-reviewed studies support the success of 12-step programs, which are based on the aid of higher power. Yeah, no shit. I know. That's why, I, that's why they suck. That's why I hate that shit. Here's the last part of it. Porn is the drug that produces an addictive neurochemical trap. And yes, as we have seen, ice cream and sexuality can be akin to crack cocaine. While we must continue to fight the good fight, legally, societally. <laughs> Remember, pornography wants you, it wants your husband or wife, it wants your son and daughter, your grandchildren and your in-laws. It doesn't share well and it doesn't leave easily. It is a cruel master and seeks more slaves. Ay. Ay, they. Anyway, let's go see who this guy is. Donald Hilton, in his new book, provides important information to all who are seeking information and help relating to pornography addiction. Most, if not all, will be affected by pornography. If you're a man, you must first safeguard yourself. If you're a father, it's essential to understand what your son will be exposed to. If you are a woman, please understand that this problem is real and must be confronted head on. You also need to be aware of the profound risk your sons face. It's important for those who have daughters to understand that although the numbers are smaller for girls, there is still a risk, both from visual pornography and primarily from chat rooms, text messaging, and verbal pornography. Right, you know those the girls, they love the written, the written stuff, the erotica. So, you know, we probably shouldn't even let them read or write. That'd probably be the safest thing. It's imperative that every young woman understands the scope and seriousness of this problem. Her awareness will help her to be discerning in dating and eventually choosing a marriage partner. <laughs> I sincerely hope this work will be helpful to all, both men and women, boys and girls, who struggle with addictions of any kind, including related sexual addictions and compulsions, such as same-sex attraction, compulsive promiscuity, and also drug addictions. Are you seeing where I'm going with this? Are you seeing where they're going with this? Where they're really going with it? 